John, let me start with you. Uh, is there a different uh, discussion about what innovation is for cars away from the auto industry than in the auto industry? I think so. I mean, if you look at the uh, exciting pictures that emerged this weekend of this minivan decked out with sensors that's alleged to be an Apple uh, car, uh, you know, you, you see technology for doing very precise localization and mapping, some of the sort of parts of the, uh, what's involved in the tech of the Google car. And so it's, it's, a, it's a different sort of uh, set of techniques and, and, and skills than sort of the traditional Detroit uh, automaking industry. Uh, Tim Higgins, uh, I love, I didn't even think about this when the story crossed, but then I saw your byline and I thought, oh yeah, Tim Higgins came from Detroit where you covered the automakers, you come here to cover Apple. What are the similarities between these companies? Well, for one thing, Apple's a global company with a lot of cash. Auto industry churns through cash very quickly. Costs some, rule of thumb is it's usually about a billion dollars for a new car to be created. And but it costs a billion dollars to create a new kind of car. Generally speaking. For companies that are making cars for 100 years. Right. I mean, it's an expensive, time-consuming process. So on one hand, Apple's got a lot of money in the bank. They got a lot of money, $178 billion, so they're not short on cash. They've got global operations. They're used to doing uh, supply chain management around the world. They're used to doing industrial design. They're used to dealing with the retail network all over the world. So in some ways, they have a lot of the things in place that a global automaker would have. Now, that said, uh, you know, Designing and building cars is very complicated, something that trips up even long experienced automakers with regulations and safety and marketing and just hitting what the consumer wants seven years down the road. It's a very long lead time for developing a car. So let's talk about the R&D spending that those companies already do. They spend boatloads of money in R&D, which is on top of, you know, I don't know, container ships full of money. I mean, the, the, the history that, the, of knowledge that they've built up, well, I guess that's the question. Is there an accumulated bit of knowledge or is it a calcified bureaucracy that, that thinks about the way they do things as opposed to what they would do with a blank piece of paper they're going to start all over again? Right. When you talk to engineers out in Silicon Valley, they find frustration when they deal with automakers. They feel like they don't move quick enough. You talk to guys in Detroit and they would say, well, there's a reason why we're so slow. Some of it has to do with safety and regulations and dealing with just kind of the, the challenges of putting a product on the road where people People's lives are going to be in jeopardy if something goes wrong. But, but let me more on that. I mean, is it about the way that the cars are made? Though, is it about because they've got they're wrestling with union contracts and they're wrestling with existing factories and they're wrestling with relationships with dealers that they've got to figure out what to put into their pipeline as opposed to put what to put on the road. They, exactly. They have a lot of legacy issues. Whereas you look at Tesla, its emergence in the last few years now, you can say what you will about their business model, but they have created um, maybe an interest in the auto space from new players who have said, look at the challenges in the past, but hey, look at this new entrant. They're able to do what they can do in this short amount of time. What can other folks do with a lot of Money. And that, I think that's where some of the excitement is coming from. John, uh, when you look at the, the excitement, what is it technologically that you feel like is right there ready to be improved upon the most? Is it battery? Is it, is it the duration of the battery? Is it uh, self-driving aspects or road awareness? I think it's safety. I think that the number of lives lost to traffic accidents over 30,000 per year in the U.S. alone and a million worldwide is just a tragedy. And I think that with the better sensors and artificial intelligence algorithms coming online, we should have the capability to radically reduce uh, accidents. So I think that yeah. that's the thing that's really exciting about what can happen now. I mean, safety is a really great thing to talk about, but Apple, Google, these other companies in Silicon Valley are also probably looking at the idea of what the user is doing with that time when they are driving. These are companies that really want to create a business where your digital life is at the center of their devices. Right now, when you're driving a car, to his point, the idea of safety, you're not able to maybe fully engage in that digital lifestyle. So if you're pushing a product that allows folks, while they're in the car, to be in the digital space, either through autonomous driving or through other kind of uh, functions, that opens up a whole new marketplace um, for commerce. Well, there's some horrible irony that the company is responsible for more probably text driving accidents, or at least in some way responsible, giving people devices in their hands for while they drive, are now looking at cars. Um, John Leonard, I also wonder if there is a different sort of pace of innovation. I mean, you're sort of safely aside from both, but you've witnessed what goes on in Detroit. You've seen all those engineering centers here in Silicon Valley. Is there a different pace of innovation in Silicon Valley? I think so. I've, I've been told that the typical Silicon Valley investor wants to return in 18 months or 24 months, and that's just very rapid uh, turnaround. 
I think interestingly, Google in building its small prototype car is actually partnering with companies in Michigan. I think that they've said that they want to work with the sort of Detroit ecosystem. And so I think there's an acknowledgement that it could be win-win. There are parts that Silicon Valley will be good at, but parts that sort of more traditional uh, Eastern U.S. industries will be good at, and it could all come together.